We're here at the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Elizabeth Beisel. She needs no introduction. Uh, so I saw you, wow, over a month ago now in Des Moines. And you, you, know, you did a book promo there. You were selling books, handing out autographs, just generally being the awesome human being you are. Take me through your life since Des Moines. It's been crazy. It's hard to imagine us together a month of a month ago, um, and now here we are, socially isolated in quarantine, sheltering in place. Um, I think the last month for me has been a lot of slowing down and catching up on stuff that I needed to catch up on, but never really had the time to do. So that's been nice. Um, book sales are going well right now because a lot of people are reading. Um, obviously, the circumstances aren't great, but it's been crazy because. I feel like my life since being done with swimming has been go, 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 always on the road, whether it's a swimmy or a clinic or a public speaking thing. Um, haven't really spent more than a week at home at a time. And now it's been a month, honestly, since we've been social distancing and quarantine and kind of starting to go a little bit crazy because I do kind of have that like go, go, go lifestyle. I'm an extrovert. I love to be around people and social. And now that I I'm kind of deprived of that. It's been a very interesting adjustment for me. But taking it day by day, I'm watching the most Netflix I've ever watched in my life. I'm currently in the middle of Tiger King, which I'm very interested. It's very intriguing. Um, very different life that they all live out there in Oklahoma. But it's it's been nice, too, because I do feel like we've had an opportunity to hit pause. Um, at least people like me who aren't at the front line of COVID. Um, and catch up with friends and family and spending quality time with friends and family. Um, really just family because that's what I'm quarantining with, but it is nice to like have those zoom happy hours and connect with people you haven't really talked to in a while. Um, so trying to look at this as an opportunity to reach out to people and check up on friends. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about the book a little. How in the heck do you write a book? I mean, going from right. swimming to like, I mean, that's a lot of words, you know, I would have trouble writing a five page essay in high school or college, you know, like how, can you take me through what that process was like for you? Yeah, so writing a book was never really on my radar. Um, it only came to life because I was going to clinics and speaking events and people would come up to me afterwards and they'd be like, yo, do you have a book? You should write a book. Your stories are awesome. So finally I heard it enough and I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll just write a book. <laughs> and so it's exactly what you imagined it to be. It's like me going home, opening up my laptop and a word doc. And I'm like, chapter one, <laughs> like, what do I do? And so it was about four months of me just literally writing um, stories from my swimming career that were really embedded within my mind. And then reaching out to coaches and being like, hey, you remember this? Or like, what was this trip like? And for those four months, I was just collecting info. And then it was kind of serendipitous where one day I was at a local beach here in Rhode Island. I was doing an open water swimming group to get back into swimming. And I met this woman named Beth and she and I hit it off and kind of just like, what do you like to do? What do you do in your free time? And she had been an author. And so I was like, huh. I'm not author material. You know, my writing is fine. Um, and so I kind of just asked her and I was like, hey, Beth, would you want to help me write this book? And she said yes, without hesitation. And what we would do is I would write a chapter or do a voice memo of a chapter or a story. And then she would transcribe it and then maybe edit it a little bit because like, I don't know how to write a book. I'm not an author. I didn't go to school for that. Um, so she would take my writing and my voice memos and kind of mold it into this beautiful chapter. Um, and that kind of was the cycle of how we did things. I would write, she would write, and then we'd mold it together. And soon enough, we had a book in our hands and it was, it was crazy because the most fun part of it for me was getting past like the manuscript part and then like doing the cover, naming the book, like checking the, the like describing the outline and the fonts and all that creative stuff. That's what I really enjoyed. Um, so it was a really cool process. And, you know, I can sort of check that box and say, yeah, I, I wrote a book, kind of. And that's a cool thing to say. So I'm glad I did it. 
Yeah. And what, so what has the experience been like for you since, you know, obviously the last month, maybe a little different, but how is that, what doors has that opened for you since it actually came out two months ago? Yeah. Two months ago now it's been out and it's opened doors for me where, you know, I can relate to people more than I've ever related to them before, because I think some people, when I show up to speak, they kind of have this, I don't know, idea that, oh, that's cool. Elizabeth Eisel, this Olympic swimmer is here to speak, but I'm not an Olympian. Like, how can I relate to her? And now that I have a book that kind of dives into the more human aspect of me, instead of just me and my accolades, um, I think it helps my public speaking a lot because people are like, oh, wow, like maybe she did this as an Olympic swimmer, but I've related to her in a professional or a business way. Um, and so I think it's open doors for me public speaking wise. Um, I've gotten a lot more requests, but now that we're obviously social distancing, I can't make that happen. Um, so that's kind of on pause, but right now we've done a lot more digital marketing um, for the book, which has been kind of fun. It's taken me out of my comfort zone, but I think it's been a really great tool for me to make myself more relatable to maybe that teenage girl swimmer who, like, like I did, puts these Olympians on a pedestal and thinks, oh, you know, they're perfect. They never deal with adversity or failures um, or doubts. And now that they can read this book, they can be like, oh, wait, like every single Olympian has been through this. And maybe I can do that too one day. So hopefully it's, it's a source of in inspiration, especially during a time like this, where we need as much inspiration as we can get. And we all are in this together. And so hopefully by them reading the book, they can go back to swimming whenever that is and feel even more rejuvenated and excited and inspired to become an Olympian one day or whatever it is that you want to go after in life. Um, Cause you really can do anything. You just have to really be dedicated to it. So. Yeah. And speaking of just putting as much uh, inspiration out there as possible, you've been doing webinars. Is that what you would call them? Um, yeah. Webinars. Signings, right. <laughs> Um, so yeah. the webinars kind of like came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, my agent CG, who is honestly the best in the world, he was like, hey, Beisel, this was week one of quarantine. He was like, Beisel, I've got an idea. I don't know if it's going to fly, but let's just try it out. And I was like, of course me. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll do it. Yeah. And so we hosted a one hour webinar free for everybody. Just sign up. We're going to talk about adversity and being in a rut or whatever it was. And we had like over a thousand people sign up in two days. So we put it out on Monday and Wednesday, I did the webinar and we were like, we're on to something here. This is kind of cool because, you know, we live in a day and age where everything is accessible through the internet. And so CG kind of had the idea of hosting weekly, which is now daily webinars with other Olympians you know, myself, we have Katie Ledecky on one this week. It's just become kind of this beautiful creation out of nothing. Um, and it's really cool because we're giving kids an opportunity and parents and coaches to become, you know, face to face with an Olympian, ask us questions. Um, we'll give you inspiring stories to get you through this hard time that we're in right now. Um, and it's all for free. And I think that's the coolest thing because like I, I say it in every webinar that I do, I'm like, this is like, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and all these amazing basketball players coming together and being like, yeah, we're going to do a free webinar for one hour today. Send in your questions. We'll answer as many as we can. And, you know, it's just a very conversational thing. And it's cool that as swimmers, we've created this camaraderie within each other. And I think that's unique to swimming because we're such, it's an individual sport, but we have such a tight niche of people um, that we've created this beautiful thing where all these Olympians are accessible to anybody as long as you have internet. Um, so it's been a really cool thing. And I think it's helped a lot of people within this quarantine to stay motivated and see the light at the end of the tunnel, um, which is super important right now. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, aside from webinars, how have you been spending this time at home with family? Yeah. So the time at home has been great. Um, like I said earlier, I've been Netflixing a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm picking up my music again, which has been really fun. So playing a lot more violin, piano, guitar, um, reading a lot more, doing like little things that I've kind of been meaning to do, like 
cleaning out my closet that's been sitting there for like years of clothes that I've never worn. So it's just those little things that we've all been like, oh, I'll get to that one day. Guys, now we have the time to do it, so do it. And that's kind of like, I wanna make sure that this time is used. You know, I wanna make the really good use of this time that we have right now because we probably will never have it again, so. Yeah, dude, like I didn't realize how much cleaning I could get done until I was forced to stay home. Right? It's like, I'm bored. My eyes are bleeding from watching too much TV. I guess I'll clean. Like it's come to that, but my house is thanking me, which is nice because it's never been cleaner. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's crazy what boredom will do to you. Yeah. I mean, have you, have you found yourself doing activities aside from cleaning that you just never thought you would do? Yeah. Like I've been, drawing like I made this uh, I'm looking at this right now because it's right next to me like I'm making friendship bracelets like <laughs> I did this when I was 12. <laughs> like, when was the last time you made a friendship bracelet bracelet so it's kind of been cool because I'm tapping into my I'm not that creative but creative side um like honestly just getting out of the house like going for a walk like that's something that I would never really do and now it's like you know what, I'm enjoying nature more than I have in a very long time. Like just getting outside, appreciating the fresh air. Um, I think it's given all of us a new perspective um, in some way. Certainly. And, and, you know, I think being creative is a big, is a big proponent to mental health, especially during a time like this. Right. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, and you say you're not that creative, but I think everyone has seen you play music in one form or another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty dang impressive. I mean, how, how long have you been playing, you know, violin and piano now? So I've been playing violin and piano since I was three. So a super long time. And it was, I was kind of like a closet musician during my swimming life because I was a swimmer. That was like who I was. Yeah. And nobody really knew about the music side of me and that's on me. I never talked about it. And so now that I'm kind of obviously not swimming anymore and we're in this quarantine that we're in, it is like, all right, well, what am I going to do for the next hour? You know what? Why don't I pick up the violin, learn a new song? Um, and it's really cool. Like I'm playing at a couple weddings um, this year. Hopefully they happen. Yeah. Um, but, but it's kind of cool because I'm tapping into that music side of me that I haven't really been able to open up to completely um, because I've been so busy. And that's another thing that I'm appreciative of for being home is like, I'm not traveling with my violin on the road. You know, I'm not like seeking out a piano in the hotel that I'm staying at. So yeah, I'll, I'll just like do a rendition of a piano song in the middle of the hotel lobby. Like I'm not doing that, but it's, it's kind of cool that I can, I just have my piano right here. I have my violin right there and I can just pick it up whenever I want. And that's a luxury that I don't really get while I'm living life on the road. So I'm definitely enjoying that side of this. Yeah. Um, have you found, have you found like your habits kind of change into, you know, like for a lot of current swimmers have asked like, how have you, how has your goal setting changed because there's so much like uncertainty? I mean, I guess I can ask you the same thing. Like, do you, have you found yourself making goals in a different way than you normally do for yourself? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's kind of because of the uncertainty of everything right now where, you know, I'm working on things that I know I will get to eventually. And I'm kind of looking at it as what would future Elizabeth thank me for right now? You know, like what can I do right now to make my future self as soon as we're done with all of this, you know, a better person and be ready to like, jump right back into the real world and ready to go. And that's kind of, for me right now, it's working on my speech. Like, how can I get this so nailed down that I can show up to a corporate event in two months or five months, however long it is, mm -hmm. and be like, yep, I'm ready to go. Um, so it's kind of just setting myself up for getting back to the real world. And I think for all the athletes right now, for me, what's really helped is staying on the schedule. And I talked to Natalie Hines about this last week on my webinar, and she's still waking up at 5 a.m. every single day, doing a workout, eating breakfast. Like, the only thing that's changed is she's just not doing her workouts in a pool anymore. Um, and I think that's super important if you, it's so important for us to maintain some type 
of schedule and structure in our life, especially when we're confined within four walls and we can't do anything else. And so I think if you set aside a couple like structured things you do every single day, that's going to help you in the future. It's going to help your mental health in the present. Um, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And again, it's okay. Cause we're all human. Like if you wake up one day and you're like, I'm not doing this 5am workout and hit snooze, okay. you're human. good for you. Like do it. Um, but I do think trying to stay more consistent than not is helping me set goals for the future and can help obviously the athletes do the same. Um, but yeah, I think scheduling right now is a huge thing for all of us, um, to get through this. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of scheduling, you, you, and you touched on this earlier, you know, you, I think are one of the best examples of someone who has really made a career out of swimming after they're done swimming. You know, you have done broadcasting, you do clinics, you, you travel almost every week. Um, how do you, I guess, you know, for someone who's looking to make, make a profession after their career or just, you know, stay in the sport in some way. How do you go about managing all of that? Like your schedule must be totally erratic. Yeah, erratic is absolutely the word. I it's the best word I would use <laughs> to describe my lifestyle. But, you know, my transition from athlete to now, I guess, like professional or real world person um, wasn't smooth. I, I kind of ended swimming and I was like, well, what's next? And that's everybody's first question, you know. Now that you're no longer a swimmer, that's not like your identity. Who are you now? And so for me, I transitioned by saying yes to everything. If it was a broadcasting event, I didn't care if I wasn't paid. I didn't care if it was a high school meet in Rhode Island. I was like, yes, I'll do it. I need the experience. I need the reps. Um, and so I think it was something where I was kind of just putting myself out there. It's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what, what stuck. And I kind of enjoyed it because I feel like all of us in life, we have to figure out what we don't like to figure out what we do. Um, and through saying yes to everything, I made a lot of connections and I found a lot of mentors that really helped me perfect if it was broadcasting or commentating or asking questions, reporting, they would really help me through those ropes. And now that I've had three years of that under my belt, I'm starting to get more solidified jobs. And that's really helping me a lot, whether it's with USA Swimming or ESPN or NBC, you know, they're little small gigs, but they add up. And eventually, once I get enough reps in and enough experience under my belt, hopefully that will turn it into something more permanent. And I really do enjoy the lifestyle that I'm living right now. I don't think it's like a forever thing. I don't think I want to be on the road every single week of every month of every year for my life. Um, but right now it's, I love it. You know, I love traveling and especially being in the swimming world. And that was kind of something that I struggled with a little bit being like, okay, I'm, I'm done swimming. Do I want to stay in the swimming world or not? And you kind of obviously compare yourself to others and you're seeing a lot of your friends going into corporate America or doing something really successful in the medical industry. And you're like, well, I'm still in the swimming world. And finally it clicked because I was like, no, I love swimming. I love this sport. I was really good at it. I know a lot about it. Like, why would I not capitalize on something that I've dedicated my entire life to? You know, we all have different paths and journeys. And for me, I needed to kind of stop looking at what everybody else was doing and be like, no, Elizabeth, swimming makes you happy. This is what you're passionate about. So follow that. Um, and I think that was one of the best, like, epiphany moments that I've had since leaving the sport was accepting that this is what I love and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm really proud of that. And I think everybody within the swimming world can appreciate that because we have dedicated our lives to this sport. Like, and, and it's not easy ever. And so for me, I'm just so happy with what I'm doing right now. And I really hope that everybody else will find that whether that's in swimming or not. Um, but eventually it's, it's an amazing feeling to be happy with what you're doing. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree with that. And that's so yeah. awesome that, you know, what a realization to come to. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Um, okay, so what would, what would present Beisel do to help future Beisel? <clears throat> I want present Beisel to, to help future us 
Uh, you're on the road every week. Do you have top travel tips for when we all get back on the road? Ooh, top travel tips. Um, all right. Well, let me think. <clears throat> I try to carry a bag every single trip that I go on. Mm -hmm. um, packing light is like my number one thing because I've experienced too many bags being lost. And if you happen to be one of the last people to board, they'll gate check your bag for free, which is better than paying for your bag. So that's one thing I always try to do. Um, I do always try to be comfy um, and always have like a reusable water bottle, like something like this, um, just to fill up in the airport at the bubbler or the water fountain. Um, and then I try to travel with as many homemade snacks. So like obviously pack in advance. And I think this is great also for athletes. Um, Allison Schmidt does this. She like makes these little power balls before she goes to a meet. And that way she knows she has like something if she's in a pinch and she needs something to eat. So I think being prepared is super important with food, especially for athletes. Um, and for me too, cause I love to eat and have food. Um, I, Oh, I always travel with tea bags. I love tea and it's so much cheaper to just have your own tea bags and go to Starbucks and get a $5 tea. Um, when like, if you just have the little bag, it's like 50 cents. What um, do you have like just like a little baggy or like a little Ziploc pouch? Okay. Um, or <laughs> they come in those like cardboard things. So if I'm on a longer trip, I'll just bring the whole thing. <laughs> um, for me, oh, now that I'm on my tea thing, so there's a tea called throat coat. And if I'm doing like a weekend of clinics or I know I'm going to be talking a lot, I bring that tea with me and that helps a ton. Um, I always bring an eye mask for the plane if it's a super long flight and I just need to sleep. Um, I typically wear a hoodie when I travel so I can like pull it over my eyes and just take a little nap. Mm. Um, hand sanitizer. I'm trying to think. I feel like there's like, I have a set amount of like a little thing that I always bring with. It's like hand sanitizer, band-aids, um, nail clippers, right. hair elastic. I feel like nail clippers are underrated in terms of. They training. are because they can like, they act as scissors too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like uh, they're, they're a staple item for me, for sure. I feel like um, if I get not only for nails, but hang nails, like if you're trapped, oh God, they, they and then it just bothers you and you yeah. end up buying a pair of nail clippers. So <laughs> might as well just bring them with you guys. Yeah. Um, I know for me, like I have a travel checklist on my phone and it's like, you have to bring like, these are the things that I know I need to travel with. And I go through that when I'm packing, like, the night before every time. Because inevitably, I will forget something if I don't. Totally. Oh, portable charger yeah. is one that I do not leave the house without when I'm traveling. Super important to have. Chargers. Do you have um, one of the, uh, like, the European converters? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Um but I only bring that with me if I'm going international. Um, but I do always have like, it's the Anchor brand, I think. It's like A-N-K-E-R. Mm -hmm. And it's just a black block. And it can charge your iPhone for up to eight times or something incredible. Um, and I, I'm like the type of person where I'll just like use my phone and not think about it. And then I'll actually need to use my phone for something like work. Uh, and I'm on 2%. So I always need to have that block charger with me. <laughs> that's yeah that's a good call <laughs> um all right well so moving forward through this you know stay at home quarantine time um do you have any closing thoughts on just kind of on moving forward and, and how people can take this time and use it as a positive yeah I think mindset throughout this entire quarantine is the most important thing and looking at it as a positive, as crazy as that sounds. Um, but being grateful that you're still waking up every single day, you're still healthy. You have your family. You can still do things outside of the pool to make yourself better. Um, and I think that's something that we always, we may take for granted sometimes. And now that we don't have that pool, we're starting to miss it. And that's also a beautiful thing is being appreciative of the pools and of just life outside of our home. Um, so really using this opportunity as a positive 
and making yourself better in ways that you wouldn't normally be able to make yourself better in. And just being grateful, honestly. And I know that it's hard to look at this as a glass half full type of scenario. Um, but I think just extending your arm to somebody else, like writing a handwritten note or sending somebody a text or an email or a phone call, thanking somebody that you know that's working the front line of this um, is super important. And it's, it probably means more to them than you know. And so I think just checking up on your, your people, your family, your friends, um, and then just staying positive for yourself and not being afraid to ask for help from people if you are down. Um, because this is kind of a scenario that we've never been in before. So we don't know how to navigate it. And I think that's okay. Um, just as long as you're being honest with yourself and you're checking up in on yourself and your family and friends and using this as an opportunity to get better. Um, I think that's kind of the most important thing and really one of the only things that we can do right now. Um, because we, I know I cannot change the fact that coronavirus is happening, but I can stay in my home and do my due diligence to mitigate the spread of this. So I think doing what you can um, to help stop the spread and help all of us get back to real life um, is one of the most important things as well. Totally agreed. Um, well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Elizabeth. Thanks, Coleman.